Radioactive Fukushima water is being released into the Pacific and on the coast of Lake Michigan. We may have a serious problem with another nuclear power plant. Check this out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Welcome back, Tom Harvin here with you. On the line with us is Kevin Camps, the nuclear waste specialist at beyondnuclear.org. Uh, Twitter handle also Beyond Nuclear. Kevin, welcome back. I understand that uh, more Fukushima water that the Japanese are preparing to pour uh, just a, 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 a blank load of uh, radiation into the ocean. What's going on with this? Yeah, this issue has been going on since 2011. So they use this cooling water to try to keep the melted cores cool. And once they get it out of the cores, they put it in these storage tanks. And so what they've got at this point is over 300 million gallons of highly radioactively contaminated wastewater. And one of the main contaminants is tritium, which is radioactive hydrogen, which cannot be filtered at an industrial scale. And the Japanese government and Tokyo Electric are proposing to simply dump it in the ocean. And the only thing stopping them is the, the fishing cooperatives of Japan, who are like the little Dutch boy with their finger in the dike. Wow. What's the half-life of tritium? It's 12.3 years. So that's 123 years of hazard. And the fishing cooperatives, and I should say that, you know, allies across the world have joined them, hundreds or thousands of environmental groups, for example. Uh, if the wastewater were to be stored for 125 years, the tritium would dissipate, which is very good news. It's what the fishing cooperatives are calling for. Don't pollute the ocean. Because what would happen as giants in this field, like Rosalie Bertel have long warned, it doesn't dissipate in the ocean. It reconcentrates in the seafood supply. And humans are at the top of that bioaccumulation hazard. So that's what the fishing cooperatives and their allies internationally are trying to stop. Right. So these radioactive elements, they get consumed by the algae and the small plants, and then the small fish eat the small plants, and then the medium-sized fish eat the small fish, and then the bigger fish eat the, uh, the medium-sized fish, and then the giant fishes like the tuna eat the big fish, and then we eat the tuna, and guess what? Now we've, you know, we've got an amount of radiation that you know, probably started out being spread over miles of ocean um, on, on a little, you know, one ounce square of meat on our plate in front of us. Am I accurately characterizing that, Kevin? Yes, and the government and Tokyo Electric are trying to downplay the hazards of tritium, which is a real mistake. Tritium packs a real punch at the microbiological level, so it can destroy DNA molecules. It, it's a beta emitter, and it packs a real punch cancer. at that intimate level. It can cause cancer. It can cause birth defects. It can cause genetic damage, and they're simply treating it as if it's harmless, and it's not. That's breathtaking. Meanwhile, um, tell me about the Cook reactors. These are uh, near Chicago. Do I have that right? Directly across Lake Michigan from Chicago. It's in southwest Michigan, Bridgman, in Berrien County, Michigan. Okay. Directly, uh, give, give, directly what's, what's going on Chicago. with these things? Well, um, for a long time, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has been in regulatory retreat, and it's just grown worse under the pandemic. Now they use the pandemic as an excuse to skip repairs, to skip inspections. And what's happening at Cook right now, similar to what happened at Davis Bessie, Ohio, back in 2002, is they're finding boric acid crystals on the top of the reactor lid. It means they have a leak, and they don't know where the leak is coming from. And what happened in Ohio 18 years ago was a giant crater got corroded into the lid of the reactor vessel and nearly burst. It would have been a meltdown. It was the nearest miss since Three Mile Island. Now they're playing games with the same kind of situation at Cook, taking very optimistic assumptions that the leakage is from certain places and not others, risking another uh, corrosion hole in the reactor lid at Cook as we speak. Simply not doing inspections because there's insulation in the way, there are visual impediments to doing the inspections, and for convenience sake, they're just skipping the inspections. And what happened at Ohio 18 years ago was a near catastrophe because of such a regulatory retreat. How many people are in the uh, 
blast zone is not the right phrase, but, you know, if this thing melts down like, well, just like Three Mile Island did, you know, not an explosion or a minor explosion inside the reactor, but basically a release of radiation, um, I'm assuming that that's kind of a best case scenario if anything bad happens. Um, how many people might be vulnerable to that? And did I get anything wrong in what I just said? Well, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission um, commissioned a study on this back in 1982. The figures were so shocking that they tried to conceal the results. But Ed Markey, who's running for re-election in the Senate right now, got it outed in congressional hearings. And the figures were very shocking. Uh, if Cook Unit 1 were to have a meltdown, 1,900 people could die from radiation poisoning, acute radiation poisoning. Another 80,000 people would be injured, radiation injuries, and then another 13,000 latent cancer fatalities. And then the property damage was something like $90 billion downwind and downstream, and this is on the lakeshore of Lake Michigan. Chicago's right across the lake. So the population has grown um, dramatically since 1982. More people would be harmed. And the property damage is just adjusting for inflation, not even counting economic development since 1982, would now be closer to $250 billion. And let's see, I'm guessing that uh, these nuclear power plants don't have an insurance company that's on the hook for that? Well, they have the U.S. federal government behind them, which means taxpayers. So the industry... Oh, you and I are the insurance the policy. First, yeah, the first $12.5 billion of that $250 billion would be the nuclear power industry and its insurance companies paying that. Above that $12.5 billion, it would be taxpayers, but it would require the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission to declare an extraordinary nuclear occurrence, which they did not do at Three Mile Island, a 50 percent meltdown. They didn't even do it. They didn't invoke the Price-Anderson Act. And even when NRC acts, Congress has to act. They have to appropriate the money. That's a lot of ifs. And probably they just let, yeah. let people be on their own to deal with their own losses. That's the most likely So are these... Outcome. Are these corroding, leaking reactors uh, using Lake Michigan for cooling water? If so, is that cooling water running through that reactor right now? And if so, if the leak, instead of happening into the air, happens into Lake Michigan, what does that mean? We have about Cook a does not have hours. cooling towers. Cook simply discharges all of its waste heat into Lake Michigan. And what this has meant, like in the wintertime, when the lake is naturally cold, they're dumping tremendous amounts of hot water, unimaginable, millions of gallons of hot water into the lake. And the fish are in this warm, artificially warm water. If Cook has an unplanned shutdown in the wintertime, what has happened in the past is the fish cannot adjust to that thermal shock of the cold coming back in. You can have fish kills of 500,000 fish at Cook. It's happened in the past, and those are the kind of risks they're taking. They saved money on not building cooling towers, though. Wow. So, so instead of steam going into the air like we see with a normal uh, uh, nuclear power plant, they're simply uh, pulling it in out of Lake Michigan, running it past the reactor core, and then pushing it back out into the lake. Um, you were talking about you know, how a shutdown might kill off the fish in the 45 seconds we have left. What happens if there's a leak in that reactor vessel and that radioactive material gets into this discharge water that's going into Lake Michigan? Is it uh, safely diluted? There are leaks, but there are also intentional releases. The wastewater release pathway at Cook and other American reactors is into the surface water that they get their cooling water from. So they have regular intentional releases of radioactivity. And again, it's not dilution is the solution. It's reconcentration. It's bioaccumulation in the fish of Lake Michigan. And people eat those fish. And that's how the harm is delivered. And there are no epidemiological studies to follow these harms. So they simply go undocumented. But they do occur. Astonishing. You can read all about it over at beyondnuclear.org. Kevin Camps, the nuclear waste specialist at Beyond Nuclear. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for dropping by today. Thanks for having me, Tom. Always great talking to you.